So many times side-by-side -side owners buy these machines with the great ambitions to have adventure and to get out in the wilderness and have a, a good time and um, you know what ends up happening is most of the time we just go to the ORV park or we go to the local trail and we don't really go more than 50 miles from our house. Uh, so this is an opportunity for us to really branch out, stretch, stretch our legs and um, see what the Washington State has to offer us, the beauty and wonder that most people don't even know is out there and uh, the opportunity to do some overlanding on these vehicles that people don't normally get to see or do uh, is really intriguing to me. So I want to get out there and, and see what's possible. We're going on the Washington BDR. This is uh, my second trek on it. Traditionally, it's about 550 miles. It goes from Oregon to the Canadian border. We're going to chop it up a little bit, mix in some wheeling, but basically hit the main points of the run, see the main focus, which is a, lot, a whole lot of mountain viewing. Um, but hopefully mix in a lot more aggressive off-road riding while we're out here. Drove up from uh, the Oregon coast yesterday, pulled a late nighter, pulled in about 4.30 this morning and uh, ready to rock and roll. Real excited. The whole trip is pretty diverse. You're going to run into sand, you're going to run into to dirt, you're going to run into trees, scrubland, you're going to be high elevation, low elevation. Um, I have yet to ride anything that is as diverse as this area is through here. Well, we're in Conconoli. We're right in the heart of the Cascade Mountains, about to tear off the better part of a thousand miles in five days. The BDR trips um, can vary depending on your flexibility and ability to travel roads and uh, navigate uh, licensed areas within the state. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to do quite a few hundred miles on this trip uh, on the dirt and a little bit on pavement as, as we can legally do it. Um, and we'll try to go as far as south as we can go and as far as north to Canada as we can go. Yeah, the scenery, the trails are nice trails. Uh, there, there's some technical parts, but not many. Most of it's pretty easy going. A little bumpy, some roads here and there, a couple little trails. Um, I hear there's a few washouts we're going to have to traverse through, but uh, just uh, 150 miles a day right around there. I can't think of many places better than this. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, we've got it planned every year for the foreseeable future. Yeah, so this trip will be interesting because it's, uh, it's really going to be a very dynamic ride. It's not going to be just smooth trails the whole time. Uh, Washington doesn't do a real good job of grooming their trails, so it'll be a lot of varied um, terrain and, and rutting and rocks, things like that. So the YXZ is going to be pretty cool uh, in all the tight terrain. It's going to have a real narrow turning radius and be able to zigzag as much as it wants. Probably we'll be avoiding a lot more obstacles than the rest of us. Uh, this, this Yamaha has done this trip before, so I, uh, I'm pretty confident in its ability to take out what, what's here. It's a 2017 Yamaha YXZ1000R, the sport shift model. We're a little over 3,000 miles in two years in it. Um, I haven't done anything performance-wise. I've done a smog delete and I open up the exhaust, I guess, is about the only performance thing that you could consider. Everything else has just been preparation for trail riding. So we're going to be taking on this trip a 2016 Polaris Razor Turbo. 
It has plenty of power to give you the thrills you want. Razorback Off-Road offered up a full outfit for a front windshield that folds down, a metal roof, a rear windshield, and a cargo rack. So this machine went from just being a sport side-by-side -side to being a fully capable overlanding vehicle overnight. The uh, Polaris is a lot more top heavy with the cage and the rack and the cargo, all that stuff. And so you're gonna be seeing uh, the Polaris be slower around corners, things like that, but it's gonna be um, quite capable. Anything you throw at it, it's gonna get over and around and through. Well, this is, this is a 2020 Pro. Um, the cage uh, built by Concept Distributing, uh, Al McBeth. He pretty much did the kickers, the bumpers, fuel wheels, tires and uh, trail exhaust intake, pretty much a whole nine yards through trail performance, good group. But uh, this is pretty much the maiden voyage. So we'll see if she holds together. Uh, the Can-Am uh, is gonna experience some tight spots. It's gonna have to do, go over a few things instead of around it. Um, but at 72 inches, it's pretty capable of handling anything Washington has to throw at it. So I've got a 2019 Can-Am X3 RC edition, uh, 172 horsepower, 72 inches wide. Done a t completely total custom cage, one-off cage, done by a guy that builds custom motorcycles, custom hot rods. Extreme performance with the center console is kind of the hub of everything that goes on with that car. We've got the Switch Pro uh, Force 12, the rugged radio kit. We've got uh, buggy whip. We've got more Baja designs, lights on there. Things can probably be seen from space. Uh, full throttle battery install on it, uh, but the extreme performance center console really ties it together nice, also with the doors, front bumper. But the main purpose of this car is to be a wheeler, a mountain, basically a, a, something I can go disappear into the mountains for five days at a time. Everything that I've done to it is to make it to where it can dominate this type of terrain, but the terrain always will have its say. You know, you can put in all the ranch time you want, but until you're on the trail, all that planning just made you feel good. You're going to find that the Can-Am has a lot more horsepower and in the straightaways you're going to lose them in the dust and, and you're going to just have to keep riding until you find them. Uh, ben on the Wag Z is going to be real, you know, wanting to go get it and, and not stop. So you'll have to go find him once in a while. Uh, I'm more practical. I want to get out there, do the thing and get, get, it, get it documented and, and have an experience. And Rich is out to have a good time and see a lot of cool stuff. So he's going to be keeping eyes on the mountains and seeing what's out there. I, I, have, a, I have a son. Um, he's got uh, Dravet syndrome, and if you look, there's a whole bunch of butterflies on the on my rig. I got a couple of them out there. It's it's representing him and uh, the foundation, uh, Dravet syndrome foundation, and uh, that's mainly what I'm doing, getting out, and spreading the word about it, and uh, hopefully they'll they'll find a cure for it. Um, he's five and ornery as heck, but uh, that's all right. If, if anything at all, I'm doing it for him. So a little bit of a, a little bit of everything with all the riders, and uh, it's gonna be a good experience all around, I think.
Razor doesn't have as much suspension and doesn't have big tires, so it's squatting a little bit. And I decided to uh, hold these guys up while I tried coming up that. Not so much of a problem over there. Not so much of a problem there. Yeah, getting sketchy there, and then all the way up here. It's pretty sketch until we got to this point, which we had a winch. Thanks to Ben and the team. So here I am thinking I'm the pain in the butt holding the team up. Oh, you were. <laughs> and Ian, Chad decided to bend, Chad. A, Chad decided to bend an A-arm. <laughs> thinking he was gonna be the top of the line here. Hey, did I make it up it? Yes. Did I make it up it? No, you didn't. I made it all the way to the top, you it's not over the crest. <laughs> Well, we just tried doing some fun climbing up the hill. Ian's X3 made it fully pinned. Pro XP Rich's driving made it up pretty much no problem. Uh, the turbo four-seater and the YXZ decided to take the long route and bypass the hill climb. And uh, of course, why would I say no to a challenge? So took the uh, two-seater turbo with the cargo rack and everything up high and heavy and squatting and on underpowered under valve shocks and the ruts were deeper than my wheels so had a little struggle but uh, the old girl got 99% of the way there about 10 feet short from the top so uh, winched out off of uh, Ben's YXZ and uh, now we're just sitting here because we discovered Ian bent his A-arm the Can-Am Taco so if you own a Can-Am, you know what I'm talking about. The A-arms come to a very narrow triangular point right at the bushing at the uh, frame. I'm severely underdesigned. He's going to be going back to staging and calling around to see if he can find uh, somebody with uh, A-arms to put on his machine. And uh, yeah, we're going to continue on to Canada, I think, and try to get to the border. And then we're going to head back here to Conconoy. Check in on Ian, make sure he's good, camp here again for the night, and then start heading south um, towards Oregon. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, the way trail riding goes. You go a little bit, and if you decide to not play it safe, you risk the uh, you risk the parts. So uh, hopefully he can find some A-arms and get back on track, and we can all go together down this trip. Otherwise, we'll be down a man, which would be a bummer. So, anyways, we're going to get back at it, and Ian's going to head back to Conconoy, and uh, we're heading to Canada. Just did what? 70 miles? 60 miles? 60 miles. Something like that? Yeah. And uh, I don't know about you, but the uh, view, eh, it's worth it, I guess. Not bad. So, Canada, I think, is right over there somewhere, right? To the left one. There you go. There we go. Yeah. 
Hi, Canada. Hey, Al Macbeth, where are you? We're looking. We don't see you. Yeah. So, Razor's doing good, except for a little squishy because it's heavy as heck. The Pro is ripping hard. Doing good. Yep. The YXZ is leading the way because uh, Chad decided to blow his A arm. <laughs> so he got he got the Kyle spirit in him and didn't want to see this, but uh, we do, and we're enjoying it. There's Canada. E Kennedy. And then over there's one badass mountain. We have the ra Razor, the Pro, the YXE, the Turbo. And there's a big hole right here. We're missing Chad. Hey, that was a fun ride over here, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. What would you tell somebody about that ride? Pack your dust mask. Drive a Polaris. <laughs> Not a can -Am. <laughs> I love you, Ian. <laughs> what would you say about it? It's a very dynamic trail when you start off from Conconoli and you move your up towards Canada. It starts to even out a bit. Pretty dusty if you're in a group. Uh, so take your time. Spread out if you can. Just enjoy the scenery while you can. Uh, there's lots to see. Um, when you get up high in elevation, you're doing a lot of switchbacks, um, and you're going to find that uh, a little bit too much throttle will get you in some dangerous situations. Uh, we found that out today with the, uh, the safari rack and all the gear loaded in the, the Razor. got a little top heavy and threw me off the corner a few times. So uh, a, little, a few butt pucker moments, and it was a good time. But uh, yeah, if you want to come up here and ride, just expect to, um, unless the weather's rainy, to have dust. It's a pretty dusty trail. So uh, and spread out and just really take your time to enjoy the scenery. It's unique and beautiful and epic. So just take your time to look at it. It's a great place to be and a great place to ride. That brown roof over here is Border Patrol. And they don't like guns. They don't like guns. <laughs> so. I would prefer to keep my gun and not give them a gun. They have their own guns. They can keep their guns. I'll keep my guns. So that's about as close as I can. 